What's up guys? Uh, today we'll be tying a Dalai Lama fly, uh, streamer if you want to call it that. Uh, I'm going to start off by taking a B10S uh, Gamagatsu streamer hook in a size number two. I'm just going to pinch that in there. Next, I'm going to take a piece of uh, black rabbit strip. Um, you can split these magnum strips into half and make two pieces. Um, I like mine about a quarter inch wide, if you can see that on there. And at the back, I like to make a point as well with my scissors. I already pre-did this one, but if you just cut an angle cut on each side, make a point on that. And uh, our next step is gonna be, I'm gonna part the hair because I'm actually gonna stick this through the point of my hook. And I like about roughly an inch behind. And I'm just gonna center that up on my strip and punch that through, remove it from your vise. Just kind of slide it up past the barb, and I'll repin it. Next, I'm using some uh, Vivas 150 denier thread and white. I'm just going to start behind the eye and work my way back. Once I get all these fibers away, and I'll go back to the, to the barb of the hook or the point of the hook as my stopping point. I'm just going to put a nice thread base on there. I'm just going to wrap up and down the shank several times. Pulling down pretty hard, guys. I like to keep everything tight. You don't want to have uh, anything loose because this will just all slip off and fall apart. So this is a rotary vise. So what you want to do next is you want to just turn it upside down. And we're going to place this rabbit on the underside, again, parting this. And it's easy if you wet your fingers to make this hair part. And I'm going to tie it over the top, just kind of holding it, trying not to let this hide slide. I'm trying to keep it on the center or top of the hook. I'll just do three loose turns over that. And on my third one, I'll just come down and pull that tight. And then I'm going to fold this back keeping everything back and I'm just going to really wrap this up here. I'm going to advance my thread all the way to the front. I've seen some patterns have dubbing in here, but for us, normally they'll get stuck in a log jam first or second cast, so we don't do that. But you can put ice dub here in whatever color you want. Um, so after that, again, you're just going to lay that rabbit strip on the top of your shank, part your hair back, so we're going to tie it in. And if you have a few fibers being being uh, sticky, you can take your scissors and you can just kind of lay it up there and really get those extra guys out and wet it. Again, on the top of your shank, one to capture, and you can see it kind of rolled on there. So I'm just going to use my fingers and point that back up to the top. That's why your first wraps are loose, so you can kind of handle that material a little easier. Okay, third wrap, I'm gonna fold this up, clear all my fibers back, pull tight down. Now I'm just gonna make a nice thread base up here. Good enough. Jay, you got that whip finisher, bud? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm just gonna whip finish the head, and you can do it by your hand, but I'm just used to doing it this way. I'll do about eight to 10. Just get a good, strong whip finish on there. Pull it tight. I'm gonna finish off with some glue. Coat it up good. Okay, that's your back half. That's done. I'll just put this out of the way and I'll let it dry for a minute. Next step, we're gonna take a, a shank. This happens just to be a number two, three X streamer long shank that I just cut the back off, just cut the hook off. I'm using a large X eyed cone head. And you wanna put that in small end first over your shank. Slide it up. Pinch it in your vise.
next I'm gonna take some 035 lead and wrap this up the shank. There's 13 wraps, and I'm gonna come back and do a few more. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this cone head's pretty big. I want a little bit of bump in there to kind of lock that cone head in up against the shank. Next part, just kind of get ready to jam this lead up in the back of that shank, pushing it into the cone head, and it kind of locks it in place right there, just like that. My shank kind of turned a little bit here, so I'm just going to rotate this. Make sure that's tight. Next, take your thread. And I always like to start behind the lead, build myself a thread base there. That way that lead can't walk around on you, can't move. And I'll even come up into the cone, come back. Just kind of locking that lead down. And then on my shank, I'm just gonna stop my thread where I'm gonna basically start my fly. You can adjust how big you wanna make your fly by how much shank you use or leave exposed. So now I'm gonna come back and get my back piece. And here I'm taking a 65 pound Power Pro right through the eye of the hook. Just loop it back and make it even. Oops. Okay, now this time I wanna have the hook pointed up, just like that. So that's how we wanna tie it on our shank. And here I like to just, again, start on the top, loose wraps, so you can one, work with this thread, and two, manipulate how big your articulation point is. I like mine to be about a quarter inch. So when you do your loose wraps, you can move this back and forth like that and it's not gonna go anywhere. You don't want it too big because then it'll get caught on itself and you don't want it too small because then it won't move. About a quarter inch and you have pretty good movement. I'll just keep that on top and advance my thread and sometimes these will kind of get, want to get in your way. I'm just gonna carry that all the way up to the top of my shank. This is your lifeline, guys. You want to make sure this is wrapped very tight. You don't want this coming apart because you're going to lose your fish. <clears throat> okay, and then you want to take your two tags, lay them back down on the top of the shank, come right back down, and advance back up. Pull them real tight. Now I'm going to take some glue and just cover the top of this. Kind of just helps it lock it in a little bit. And I'm actually just going to lay these over one more time. Rather be safe than sorry. Time right on the top, just like so. Now you can cut this off. Now I'm just gonna wrap, wrap this in so I can't see any of the green Power Pro sticking out. That's good right there. Next step, we're gonna take our back, lay it up front. And here again, wet your fingers, guys, part this hair. And you wanna also kind of pull back on that that way it's there, see that's your articulation. Wet this down, watch with the hookup, it, you know, you can get yourself. I'm gonna take a loose wrap over the top. You wanna keep that on the center, center of your shank. Second wrap, third wrap, pull down tight. Come behind it, take a few more wraps, advance your thread just behind the comb. Now we're gonna take our strip here and we're gonna fold it under, and we're gonna palmer this hair back. So each kind of wrap, pull tight, wrap it, and you're gonna just kind of touch, touch it, touch your other uh, piece of leather that you rolled over. So you're touching turns, I think could be the correct terminology, palmering this back each time. I 
all the way up to the top. And I'll just wrap that around. There's not much there, so I'm just gonna hold down on that. Capture this right underneath the cone. Fold that back, lash this in good. Okay, next step, I'm gonna turn my vise upside down, part this hair down, and I'm gonna take my olive strip. And I didn't, I didn't pre-cut this, so I'm just gonna take my scissors, cut a point in there. Just like that. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna measure my fly here. So I'm gonna hold the back and I'm gonna to touch my black piece of rabbit strip and I'm just gonna lay that up top and that's how I get my measurement right there. So I'll mark that with my finger and you could lay it on there and cut it, but I like to just do it this way. Mark that out. You can just cut a straight cut across. And I like to just pull a few of those hairs off the front of that, just exposing the hide, just like that. And I'm gonna tuck this under this head. Now I'm gonna wrap my thread around it, making sure that's on top. You can adjust it if it's not, just move it around. Now you lash it down. Okay, now if you wanted, you can just turn your vise back over. Caution of the hook point, it's still up. If you had a hair clip or something, you could lash it down. This one's kind of shot, but we'll just kind of leave it there to hold that. Next, we're going to use some saltwater flashaboo. And this is what's called a V-tie, guys. Basically, take one strip, split it in half around your thread. Just like that. And advance it right on the side, holding it back. Wrap back, that captures it, and then come back because we're gonna do another piece on the other side. There's my hair clip. We'll take our second piece of flashaboo, same thing, V-tie. Split it in half. We're gonna cut these, it doesn't matter if they're even. Again, hold it, holding out, this is pressure. Bring it right up into the cone. Start wrapping it back, wrapping it forward and back again. Now how what I like to do is I like to just grab all four just to the back of my rabbit here and just above it, I'm gonna cut it. Next step is to make a collar. So this is a, a standard dubbing loop. Bring your thread up, come over the top of your shank, come behind it, and I like to come behind my loop itself. This locks that loop in three times. Advance my thread all the way to the cone now. Have a dubbing loop like that. You guys can use some wax if you'd like. I like to use it because it kind of holds this rabbit in and allows me to cut it easier. So just, you don't need to coat it, just a few blots and that will work. Just give me one moment, I gotta find my dubbing spinner. Um, here I selected a few pieces of rabbit for the collar. Now I like a big long collar And I'm actually gonna do this one two-tone if it cooperates for me So that's about how long that's a, gonna make a good collar piece. I like it so it can pulsate And here's my white piece now you can see the difference here guys and this is I mean just it's the same rabbit Basically some hairs are just longer than others. You can see that olive one is much longer than the white So I'm gonna use my white up Excuse me to uh, the head of my cone, and this is gonna be my first piece. Okay, I like to split my thread like that, lay this rabbit in there, capture it. Kind of blew my white piece away. And it's easy if you kind of just pull this hair out, hold it flat, slide it right in there, and that wax is gonna kind of hold it. I'm gonna take my dubbing spinner now and just kind of capture these guys. And it, it wants to turn on you. So now I'm gonna even them up. I like to just grab this, pull them out. That way I can get maximum length out of this, out of this rabbit fur. 
I'll turn it so I can cut it. And this is a bit tricky, guys. These scissors are a little bit dull, so it might wander around on me, but you're just trying to cut as close to this rabbit hide as possible without knocking this out of the dubbing loop, because it can happen. Um, I'm sure, you know, first few times it, it's gonna get frustrating, but just keep working at it and you'll get it. So now, if you want a little bit more rabbit, take the, take the flat side of your finger and just kind of gently push on that and that'll extend that out, even it up. Trying to get maximum length for this nice bushy collar. So after you got that, give her some spins. And I like to really just let it bound in there tight because you don't want this to come out of your loop. You won't be able to pull on it. You can take some scissors or a bodkin and just kind of run them up this, kind of picking these fibers out that got trapped. Just kind of work your way up this thread. If your scissors are sharp, it will cut the thread. So use, use a dull pair or use a bodkin or a pick just to kind of pick all this out. Just like that. It's nice and bushy. Start up top, you can wet your fingers a little bit, hold that back, just like we did with the body, palmering this back. All the way up to the front. Wet that back just so it sits there. Now when you tie off your dubbing loop, again, come behind your dubbing spinner, come up around, come behind it, come up around, and it's okay. You see it unwinding like that. That's all right if it does that. Don't worry about that. Your, th your thread wraps up here are keeping it tight. When you're done there, cut the thread off. And for here, I like to pre-glue this. And the reason why I do that is because after you have this whip finished, it's hard to get glue down in there. It's gonna mat your head down. So what I like to do is I like to pre-glue my, th my thread, wet this really back. And you can just blot this down. <clears throat> Hold your collar back and just start just coming right up here. And this is gluing it, it's locking it in, and we're just gonna do some whip finishes on top of that. And that will finish the fly out. Five, six, whatever you prefer. Lock it in. And that's it, guys. That is a Dalai Lama that we fish religiously here on the upper Nishigak River. One more tip I will show you is that shank that we exposed earlier you don't want that on there because that could inhibit the movement of your fly. So just part all this down, take your side cutters, and just cut this point off of here. Watch you don't go too deep because your lifeline, your power pro is there. It's gonna hold it in my hand and cut it. I don't like that, just so you don't poke in somebody's eye out. And that's how it looks when you cut it. Just a little piece up there is okay. And this, an articulated Dalai Lama fly.